In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we from the Church of God in Christ Jesus here in Los Angeles, California are greeting each and every one of you peace. Our fellow brethren, loved ones, and friends that are uh, always uh, having the initiative of uh, hearing the words of God through the Church of God in Christ Jesus. Today we are going to pursue or to continue our uh, Bible study and this time it is Bible study number 9. But before we start opening our Bibles, we have to give first to the hand of the Lord our uh, holy uh, desire of learning uh, more of His wisdom that uh, He kept secret to many, many people in this earth. And He have only uh, decided to give it to quite few creations of Him through His love and to save as much as possible all human beings. Before we continue, let us bow down our head and uh, also our knees and let us give to His uh, Almighty Hand all the things that we are going to pursue on this uh, God-blessed day of our Bible study number 9. Our dear Lord God, the only Almighty living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the living God of the prophets of Israel, you are also the Almighty One that called our father and our mother, and they have also served thy holy name in the spirit and in the truth until the very last breaths of their lives. Our dear Lord, in your holy name, Jesus Christ, we bow our head and our knees, and we have our holy desires to uplift to your throne in heaven our most heartfelt thanksgiving. Thank you very much, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the lives, strength, and all the bounties that up to this uh, new year have let us experience in our lives. Thank you very much our dear Lord, most especially for the Bible studies that you are continuously uh, giving to each and every one of us until these latter times for the salvations of our souls. We do not also forget to thank you for taking care also, giving life, health and contentment and bounties to all our loved ones especially to our friends who are also very eager to learn, to listen, to read, and to study with us the key to the kingdom of heaven. Our dear Lord, today we are going to pursue our Bible study number 9, which we all have faith that you have prepared this in your throne in heaven, and today you are only going to use the mouth of your humble servant, for us to listen to our Bible study. Please, dear Lord, kindly consider your little servant as a humble tool that you may use to disseminate to each and as much as possible to as many people in the whole world so that they may also learn about your truth, which is the only key to our salvations. And by so doing, on these latter times, through the use of your church and your humble servants, many more souls, many more people should learn about you and your truth in your church of God in Christ Jesus. And in the second coming, there will be more souls to meet you. And also, if we become faithful to you and your gospel until the end of our lives in your second coming, all of us will be qualified to enter the kingdom of heaven, the eternal life that you have promised unto us. All of this, our dear Lord Jesus Christ, we beg in thy holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now our fellow listeners, 
Let us uh, have our Bible in our respective uh, hands and we are going to start listening to the words of God and while your humble servant in the Lord Jesus is reading the uh, verses I am requesting each and every one to also uh, open your own respective Bible to make sure that I am telling you the truth and uh, I, I am not adding anything neither do I deleting anything pertaining to the holy words of God. Our subject for today, Bible study number 9, the righteous way of servitude to God according to the Holy Scripture. The righteous way of servitude to God according to the Holy Scriptures. There are uh, so many religions nowadays both in the Christian side and also on the non-Christian sides. The Christian side all must abide in the law of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is why we are called Christian. Because Christian means followers, soldiers of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the other hand, there are non-Christian who do not believe in the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Some of them are called uh, soldiers of their God, like soldiers of Allah, the Muslims. And others are believers in other leaders which are already dead many, many years ago, like Buddha. We call them Buddhists. There are Confucius. We call them Confucius. And many, many other uh, religious leaders whose members are called to their uh, diverse names. But we are only going to study in particular one subject. The righteous servitude to God. Every religion have diverse ways of servicing their uh, deity or their God. We all knew, and it is very uh, particular to us on these latter times, that a lot of Buddhist followers, they serve their, their uh, image of Buddha by uh, putting an incense candles and they even uh, put fruits bread rice whatever it is same way to the confucius uh, followers same way as to other religions that uh, we shall call them as pagans because those are people who serve images in the side of Christianity, there are also uh, Christians that serve images, and these are the most popular one, the Catholics. They have the images of Virgin Mary as Mother of Christ, images of uh, Peter, images of uh, their popes, images of people who have died many many years ago and they are still uh, making or canonizing new saints every now and then like for example their latest canonized saint in the person of mother teresa and the way they serve their uh, gods goddesses their statutes or st statues of uh, people they uh, put flowers like the Sampagita around their neck. And I saw some people, Catholics, who are also uh, offering uh, diverse things to, to their Virgin Mary. Especially uh, repetitious prayers. Now, we are going to ask the Lord God if these things that people are practicing 
Are these things acceptable to God? If not, what is the righteous way of offering our services to our God that will be acceptable to Him? To this introductory question, let us uh, start opening our Bible. According to the Holy Scriptures, let us first understand what is the meaning of servitude to God. Let us open the book of Matthew, chapter 6 and the verse 9, from the mouth of our Lord Jesus Christ, when He is uh, giving an example to His followers, the Christians, on how we must pray to Him. After this manner, Matthew chapter 6 and 9, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. On verse 10, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what is the answer of our Lord Jesus Christ, we being Christian? We ask Him, what is servitude to God? Meaning only to say, how, how can we serve the Lord God in accordance to His will, which is righteous, so that we will serve Him and our servitude shall be acceptable to Him? The Lord Jesus, Matthew 6, 9 and 10, we must pray like this. We know that prayer is uh, one of uh, the uh, initial uh, service that we should offer to God. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We must first give glory, edify his name. That is why in Philippians chapter 2 and the verses 10, what is the name of God? The only living God of heaven, earth, and under the earth. So that by the name of Jesus, all knees shall bow down. In heaven, on earth, and under the earth. There is no other God except our Lord Jesus Christ. And the first thing that a person, a Christian must do, is we must glorify the name of the only God of heaven, earth, and under the earth, which is Jesus Christ. And how shall we serve Him? Thy kingdom come. Well, what is the meaning of kingdom? The kingdom is the where our Lord God is. He is the Father of all the creation. He is life eternal. His kingdom is peace and contentment. Thy kingdom come. We are praying that the peace, the contentment, the blessings must come to us. And we are begging Him, Thy kingdom come. And how shall we be that His kingdom, His peace or life eternal shall come to us? Thy will, this is it. The will of the Father in heaven be done in earth as it is in heaven. So that is the meaning of servitude that every Christian must do the will whatever the desires of the Lord God Jesus Christ in heaven. These are the things that we should do. To make it even clearer, let us open the book of Matthew also chapter 26. And the verse is 39. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed. This is specifically the last prayer of our Lord Jesus in the, in the garden of Gethsemane before he was uh, arrested. Because we all know he was betrayed by Judas for 30 pieces of silver. And with this, being God, he knew that his uh, 
days is going to be finished on the earth. So he called his uh, apostles and they went to Gethsemane. And he kneeled down and prayed. Remember that he is in this uh, particular moment. He is manifested into flesh. He looks like an ordinary man like us. And every time that he speak, every time that he do something, every, everything that uh, he showed his apostles like uh, the prayers in Gethsemane, these are all an example like what he said in the book of uh, John chapter 13 and the verses 15 for I leave you an example for you to do also to each of you and one of the example he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed he gave the, the apostle uh, examples of how to pray and this is what we are studying now what is the true servitude acceptable to God and he said, Oh my father, remember he is in the form of a man. He is in the form of a humble servant because he removed his godliness so that he will have blood, he will have physical body to be offered in the cross. Oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, here is the true servitude to God. But as thou will. So therefore, the true servitude to God is obedience to the will of the Father in heaven, not our own will. In this, Matthew 26, 39, we know when he said, Oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass over me or pass from me and the cup he is mentioning in his prayers here is about all the hardship and all the physical pains that he is going to endure because he is going to be crucified he said if it is possible we know there is nothing impossible to god he could uh, turn it away from him but he is an perfect example of how a true Christian or follower of Christ to be. So he himself give himself a perfect example to all the followers. Let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. It is the will of the Father in heaven. It is his own will. He removed his godliness he put himself in a material body and they know him as Jesus Christ to give a perfect example and also to know that uh, Jesus Christ is for the glory of our Lord God. Philippians chapter 10 or chapter 2 and the verse is 11. So that by the name of Jesus, if we, if we bow down our knee and our head and uh, uh, recognize Him as the Father also, uh, every time that we glorify His name, it is for the glory of God. Because God, God is a spirit. God has no flesh, no bone. No man have ever seen God so that he will be seen by people. He manifests into flesh. He made a material or physical body and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he showed us how our servitude to God, to the spiritual God, the spirit God, no flesh, no bone, shall be acceptable. It is simply obey his will. Whatever is the will of God from heaven, even if it, if it will cause us our death, even it will give us sorrows. If it is the will of the Father, who are we? So what do this mean? In John chapter 21 and the verses 18, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, He is speaking to Peter, the Roman Catholic Church, made the 
Apostle Peter a saint, and even give him the title as the first Pope of Rome. Honestly, from the Holy Scripture, Apostle Peter never stepped his foot on Rome. It is Apostle Paul. When he was brought to Rome, it was his days to be crucified according to uh, the history of the Apostles' lives. You have to read also the uh, biography of this holy man of God. He is talking to uh, Peter when our Lord Jesus called him and uh, considered as the most senior. And here in chapter 21, verse 18 of John, he is uh, teaching Peter about the importance of his uh, being called as an apostle. The word apostle only means uh, a witness that saw our Lord Jesus Christ and hear and touch them and touch him. That is the meaning of apostle, witness. And the Lord Jesus on 21 and 18 of John said to Peter, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whether thou wouldest, and that is very true. When we are all young, we are careless, we are carefree. We run here, we run there, we do whatever we want. We would like to wear a yellow shirt, a pink, or whatever, red pants or blue pants. We are doing those things when we were young. But when thou shalt be old, when thou shalt be old, meaning to say, when you have grown up already and your mind is already complete knowing what is right and what is wrong, specifically speaking, when thou shalt be old, meaning to say, when you learn about servitude to God, thou shalt stretch forth your hands and another shall gear thee and carry thee whether thou wouldest not. Meaning only to say, a true Christian who is saying that he is a follower of Christ, he is forgetting his own desire. He is uh, leaving behind what things he needed, he is uh, uh, prone to doing before. When you grow old, you will submit yourself 100% submission to the other hand which is none other than the hands of God. God shall gear thee and carry thee or bring you whether thou wouldest not wherever you do not want to go there is where God will bring you. That is the will of the Father in heaven. Why is it that servitude to God is doing the will of the Father from heaven, which is doing things we do not want. Why is it the other side around? Most of the people do not want to be uh, instructed to do this, do that. All people, because we are uh, created in the image of God, we all know, God has no image, but God have attributes like uh, God is almighty, the most powerful. God is uh, love, omni amore. God is justice, omni justicia. God is intelligent, omnisciente. That is why all people, because of this attribute that God gave to us, all of us would like to be God to ourselves. And I do not want to be told what to do. So am I. Everybody shall stand up to what they want because we were not created like a robot. We were not created to be asked by somebody, do this, do that. We have all our uh, mind. We know what is right. We know what is good. We know what is wrong. We know what is bad to ourselves. You see the, the difference? That is why we are asking... Why is it that servitude to God is doing the will of God from heaven, which are things we do not want? Believe you me, when uh, Peter was called and the rest of the twelve apostles, 
na ito na tuwan. To be, to be following Christ. That is why when the Lord was already buried, when He died in the cross for three days and three nights, the apostles, the, they all went back to their job as fishermen again. Read the Bible. That is why when the Lord risen, He saw the apostles already uh, catching fish in the sea. But our uh, studies is about the righteous servitude to God. So wh wh what is the reason? Why, why do we have to do the will of the Father? Why can't I not do my own will? As we all know, there's a lot of people in the world, like I mentioned earlier as an introduction, a lot of people, they want to serve Buddha. That is their will. They want Buddha. So they made the image of Buddha, and they sanctify Buddha, they glorify him, they offer sacrifice to Buddha. Why can I not do the same thing for myself? Let us open the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and the verses 36. For we have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. We need to have patience. What does this mean? Even if I like something but the will of God for me is to serve our Lord Jesus Christ, to bow down my head and my knee to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that is the Lord's expectation to each and every one of us, even if, even if I do not want. Even if I do not want to recognize Jesus Christ as God, but this is the will of the Father, I will do it. Why? I have to have patience. This is a sacrifice for me. I am leaving behind what I wanted. I am forgetting what I desire. First of all, I have to obey first the will of God in heaven. Because with such sacrifices, I could be assured that I will receive the promise. That is why in Matthew twenty-four thirteen, our Lord Jesus himself said, To those that shall endure until the end, they shall be saved. What is the very big mistake that a person can do for not obeying the will of the Father in heaven, in serving God. Let us hear the answer from the book of Proverbs of King Solomon. The chapter is 14 and the verse is 12. What is wrong? What is the big mistake that we are doing? If we instead do follow our own will, and disobey the will of the Father in heaven. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. In this alone let us uh, accept it. God is speaking when He mentioned a way. A way is a procedure. Spiritually speaking, a way is the words of God. A way is exactly like a typical street that we walk with, pass with, drive with. A way is literally speaking the way that we would, we would walk in accordance to the will of God. It is, in, in these latter times, a way is called also as a church or iglesia, church away, the body of God. In here, Proverbs chapter 14 and the verses 12, according to King Solomon, to some people, there is a way, there is a church, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, that for them it is righteous. But, the end thereof are ways of death. Remember, if you think your ways or your iglesia for you is correct, and you think it will bring you to heaven or to God, if you do your own way, 
you did not obey the will of the Father in heaven and you walk in your own way, you thought it is right? The end of this are ways of death. Meaning to say, if we do not follow the way of God, we thought it is correct, we thought it will give us peace, contentment, spiritual guidance, but we are wrong. The end of that is hell or death. According to uh, uh, Revelation chapter uh, 21 and the verse is 8, to those unbelievers, you do not want to believe the true way of servitude to God is to obey the will of the Father. You do your own will. The end of it is death or punishment in hell, which is the second death, the eternal damnation in hell. Revelations chapter 21 and the verses 8. Speaking of the righteous way of servitude to God acceptable to Him, what did the Lord God initiate or taught His very own people, the Israelites, when they were taken out of bondage from Egypt and are ready to receive their promise or inherited lands that is the land of Canaan that floweth with milk and honey? Let us open the book of the Old Testament times. In the book of Deuteronomy, the chapter is 12 and the verse is 8. You shall not do after all the things that we do here this day. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. The person speaking here is the prophet of God, Moses. And in Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 8, this is uh, upon the completions of their trip from the desert to the land of Canaan that is uh, flowing with milk and honey. And right here when uh, they are about or ready to cross the river of Jordan and to enter Canaan, Moses repeat again the words of God about how they would serve him the right way, their servitude will be acceptable to him. Deuteronomy this book was written which is to uh, repeat again the law. Many times uh, in Deuteronomy, Moses and Aaron are repeating the laws of God to his children. And right before they cross the river Jordan, for them to gain the promised land, Moses speak to them again and said, Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 8, you shall not do after all the things that we do here this day. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. Moses reminded the Israelites, remember, we should not do after all these things that we do here this day. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. Because in the wilderness, during the course of their 40 years of traveling, a lot of them are hard-headed, stubborn, even defying the laws of God given by God through Moses. So finally, before they received the promised land, Moses repeated the law again to them. And they and Moses told them, do not do. This day, every man who whatsoever is right in his own eyes, they are doing. What is it? Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 13. Take heed to thyself, take care, that thou offer not thy burnt offering in every place that thou seest. Here it is. The most important thing, that is why Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 8 was repeated by Moses to them again, do not do it anymore. Take care of yourself. Take heed. Because you are you're offering, you are offering to every, every place that thou seest. You cannot do your own thing. Remember, you are 
Save, you were saved by our Almighty Lord God. And He deserved to be followed. And His will, that is what He wanted all of us to do. That we should not offer our offerings in every places that we want. In verse 14, But in the place which the Lord shall choose, in one of the tribes, that is the Levites, the Levites were considered as uh, separated from the twelve tribes because the Levites, they were not given uh, an inheritance of a piece of land in the land that floweth with milk and honey. The literal uh, inheritance of land were given only to the eleven tribes because the Levites were separated by God and their sole obligation is to spiritually lead them or serve them. The Levites shall be their preacher, high priest, my fellow brethren that will lead them in, in offering their sacrifices. But in the place which the Lord shall choose in one of thy tribes, there thou shalt offer thy burnt offering, and there shalt thou do all that I command thee. They should listen to the Levites, and wherever the Levites want uh, them to offer their sacrifices, the Levites shall uh, make the tabernacle of offering, led by God, and all the rest of the Israelites shall obey the Levites' words because the words of God was put by God to the Levites who are their priests. Otherwise, if we fail following His will, if we still do not obey the will of the Father, how He would like us to, to serve Him, uh, what will happen to all our services that, we'll, that we render for Him? Things that we have done, not with His own will, but our own will. What will happen to all those sacrifices? In Matthew chapter 15 and the verses 9, we all knew that during those days, the olden times or the days of the Israelites, the servitude that the Lord God would want them to do, to offer to Him, firstly, they should follow the Levites because the Levites are their spiritual leaders and they are uh, obliged by God to offer uh, sacrifices to Him by using uh, clean animals like sheep, goat, cows, Birds, doves, all those things are written in the Holy Scriptures. I'm not going to uh, read to you each and all of them, not to make our study prolong. Our uh, main aim is to learn on this Bible study number 9, the righteous, acceptable servitude of a person to God. And those days in the olden times, God wanted the Israelite to offer, to serve Him, an offering of a killed, clean animal and placed in the tabernacle of God that is going to be prepared by uh, the Levites through the instruction of God. And then, if the Lord God is well pleased on their uh, offering, the Lord God will send fire from heaven and consume all their offerings. And the fire from heaven cometh down. It looks like a, a tongue of fire that is really uh, tasting, tasting their, their of literal offering of the flesh of clean animals. So what will happen if they did not do the will of the Father then for the Israelite? What, what will happen if they did not do it in the right place instructed to them by God through the Levites with the exact offering of clean animals? 
What what will happen? Matthew chapter 15 and the verses 9. But in vain, nothing, nada, null. But in vain, they do worship me. Why? They offer on tabernacles in their own will, not fa- not obeying the will of God through the Levites, teaching for doctrines the commandment of men. It becomes a commandment of man. So what they did is their their will, and if it is the will of man, in vain, nada, kaputs, nothing. In vain they do worship me. Wrong worshiping. They follow the teaching, doctrines, commandments of man. It is no longer the will. It is no longer the doctrine. It is no longer the commandment of God. Instead, what they did, their own volitions, their own doings, it is not acceptable to God. In relation to our Bible study number nine, the righteous way of servitude to God. What is the warning of our Lord God through Apostle Paul about the uh, commandment that uh, do not come from God? According to Apostle uh, Paul in Titus chapter 1 and the verses 14, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandment of men, that turn from the truth in vain. Those are vanity, not acceptable to God. Remember, there is a basis, there is a book, even during the time of the Israelites, the first book, the two tablets of stone, and the rest is the writings of Moses. And when Moses died, comes the next prophets that were sent by God to them, like Joshua, Samuel, Jeremiah, Daniel, Isaiah, and so forth and so on, until Malachi, the last prophet. Those books that they have written, these are solely or only should be the basis of the obedience for a righteous servitude to God. That is why in Isaiah 34.16, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, and read, No one of this shall fail, none shall want her mate, for my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit, It had gathered them. It will not need any companion. The Bible alone, the Old Testament and the New Testament, and it was proven even by our Lord Jesus Christ in the book of John chapter 5 and the verses 39. Read the Holy Scripture. Study. Search. For to them you believe, you will have eternal life. And it is the Bible that will introduce me to you. It's very, very clear, my beloved brethren. Now, so this is how important our uh, Bible study number number nine. That if we would like to enter to heaven and have eternal life, we must put into our mind that we must forget ourselves and we must abide by the will of the Father whether it is likable to us or not likable to us, whether it is bitter, whether it is sweet, whatever the outcome shall be, it is the will of the Father. We have no right to turn away from the words of God. What right or authority do God have on us? Why, why is He commanding us to obey only all His will in heaven? Remember, all the will of the Father, as He uh, told us, to the letter we shall follow it. 
What right or authority do God have on us? Why why is he commanding us like we are uh, like we are uh, slaves? Why? Why do God commanding us like we we do not have any more right upon our own selves to to do what we like? In the book of Psalm of prophet David the the chapter is 100 and the verse is 3. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. We must know that. It is He that had made us. God is our Creator. He, God made us. Do we understand that? God made us. To make it a little simple, let me give you a very simple example. If, for example... I made something for myself. A very good example, let's say, a pencil for writing. I made my own pencil for me to write my... To anybody, I like to write a letter, important things that I shall do. I will use this uh, in writing important things in my daily diary. Can the pencil that I made for me to serve me to write important things to me into a paper... Can he refuse? He cannot refuse it. He is mine. I made him. Do you follow? The pencil cannot otherwise deny what I wanted him to write. But if the pencil worn out already of its writing material, the important thing is we know uh, what ex what things I am giving you as an example. If it fails to write already, it cannot serve me anymore. Then I will throw it away because kaput. It cannot it cannot serve me anymore. When it cannot serve me anymore, then it is nothing. I will throw it away. The same thing as what God expect us to do. He owns us. God is our creator, not ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. In his book of Psalm, chapter 100 and the verse is 3. Now, can we deny or defy God's will or commandment? Can we turn away? Can we just ignore the will of the Father in heaven? Let us open the book of Romans chapter 9 and verse is 20. This time according to Apostle Paul. Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing form? We are, we are the thing that was formed. We know that God formed us in the dust of the earth. Can the thing form say to him that formed it? Why hast thou made me thus? In, tw in 21, Had not the potter, the potter is God, the owner, the maker, has not the potter power over the clay of the same lamp to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Now, this is a question that give the answer. Has God no right to make us we are from clay of this earth to make one of us beautiful, the other, uh, the other one uh, ugly to dishonor or uh, unto dishonor. Of course, he has the right. Can he not have the right to do that? Of course, he can do that. This is the meaning of Romans chapter 9, verse 20 up to 22. Our beloved listeners, the Father is none other than our Lord God. He can do everything. So therefore, if God created us to serve Him only, to follow all His commandments, all His will in heaven, whether if it will hearten our own feeling, give us discontentment because we failed to do our own will, we cannot, we cannot do other things except to obey him and in Romans chapter 14 and the verses 7 for none of us live it to himself and no man die it to himself 8 for whether we live we live unto the Lord 
And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. This only tell us that whether we live longer, whether we die younger, it is the will of the Lord. He can do anything to each and every one of us. So we, we, have, we have no right, my beloved brethren. We people created after His own very image or uh, attributes, we have no right except to obey, to follow, whether it will make us happy, whether it will make us sour, sourly discontented. All we have to do is only one way, to follow God. We fail to serve Him anymore, like the pencil, like the ballpen, if we do not write the right things anymore, we cannot serve our owner anymore, then we will be uh, thrown outside in the garbage can to be thrown into fire later or the damnation of hell, the death eternal. Last question. Are there people written in the Holy Scriptures who serve God during their days but their services were not accepted by God? And what is the main reasons? Let us open the book of Genesis from the very beginning. Chapter 4 and the verses 3. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. The Bible is speaking here about the first two children born of uh, Adam and Eve, our parents. Even then, the Lord God had instituted already offerings to Him. And in here, Cain brought fruits of the ground as an offering unto the Lord. And what did Abel do? Verse 4. And Abel, he also brought off the firstlings of the flock, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel, unto his offering. But unto Cain, and to his offering he had no respect. And Cain was very wrath, and his countenance fell. And this is the beginning of the commission of the first murder, because we all knew that Cain killed his own brother Abel. And what is the reason? The very reason is that his offering, what did Cain offer to the Lord? Fruits of the ground. Now what we are going to understand here. What is the will of the Father in heaven? That when they should offer to Him, it shall be the meat, the fat of clean animals. For example, like clean sheep, clean goat, clean dub, clean birds, clean cows. And every uh, uh, animals that are clean in accordance to the will of the Father in heaven, that is the thing acceptable to Him. And what Cain did, Cain being a uh, agriculturist, because uh, he is something like his father, Adam. Adam was the first person that uh, tilled the soil. Remember when they were sent out by God from the paradise on earth, then the garden of Eden, because they broke the law not to eat the fruit of uh, the knowledge of uh, good and bad, and they were thrown out, and the Lord God from now on, because you, you did this, and you also obey your wife to eat the forbidden fruit, from uh, the sweat of your face thou shalt eat your bread. He is the first agriculturist, and uh, after that, when they have these children, Cain, Cain uh, followed or emulate his uh, foot step being an agriculturist. So he disobeyed the will of the Father in heaven. And uh, maybe he thought that anyway, this is also uh, a nice offering. And in fact, he picked the best of his uh, plants. But the thing is this, it is not the will 
of a person whether he think it is good, whether he think it is perfect, so long as it doesn't fall to the will or to the commandment of the Father in heaven, it is still not acceptable. That is what happened. And that is, uh, believe me, the very reason why he killed his brother, because he got envious. Because Abel, who offered to God the firstlings of his flock, and the fat thereof of his animal, and the Lord had respect, meaning to say the Lord had taken the offering of Abel, and ignored that of Cain, because Cain, instead of obedience to the words of God, he obeyed his own self, similar to what we heard, I just read earlier in the book of Proverbs, chapter 12 and the verses 14, there is a way that seemeth righteous to a person. To Cain, he thought it is righteous for him to offer his, his fruits from, uh, from plants, ignoring the words of God. He got mad, he got so rot, and led him to be the first person who have ever committed a murder he killed. His brother Abel because of enviousness. Are there other people that was literally written in the Holy Scripture did not obey the will of the Father and was also rejected by God? Let's open the book of Leviticus chapter 10 and the verses 1. And Nadab and Avihu, the sons of Aaron. Let me... Uh, Remind us again once more that out of the twelve tribe, the Lord God separated the Levites. And who are the Levites? The Levites are people that He have chosen to uh, to be uh, serving Him in every sacrifices of the whole Israelite. They were not given an inheritance of the land instead their inheritance is the tithing that is why in the old testament time it is uh, an obligation to give tithing that is the salary of the levites moses and aaron and miriam they are brethren in the flesh they are levites and they are originally the first priests that was uh, assigned by God to lead his nation. And during this time in the book of Leviticus chapter 10 and the verses 1, even the children of Aaron, whose name is Nadab and Avihu, they were grown up already and are assisting for the uh, offering of the children of Israel, their uh, Anim animals that they offer as sacrifices to God. But, let me continue reading. And Nadab and Avihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censor and put fire therein, and put incense therein, and offered a strange, different fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not, and there went out fire from the Lord, and devoured or burnt them, and they died before the Lord. You see how strict our Lord God is? God is love, we know that. But to this particular instance, when Nadab and Avihu made a different censer, made or put a different fire therein, that was not asked by the Lord. Because you know, when the Israelites are offering, nobody will, will, will pour uh, gasoline or uh, kerosene to fire or to lit up their offering because the Lord God we, Himself will send fire from heaven. And this fire that looks like a tongue, it will swallow, it will burn all the offering and it is a sign that the Lord God is well pleased to their sacrifices. But Nadab and Avio, they are very impatient. 
Let us imagine that uh, they already have prepared all the cut animals in the, the tabernacle and they are expecting fire. But maybe it's already uh, 30 minutes have passed or uh, one hour uh, have passed and uh, Nadab and Abiyu is already is asking uh, why, why is the Lord not <laughs> bringing down the fire yet? The impatience of Nadab and Abihu brought them their idea or maybe saying to each other, let us get another fire, let us get another censer, let us get kerosene or gasoline and pour it to the sacrifices and li lit it up ourselves. Because of their impatience, the Lord God got mad to them. The Lord God, when He brought down the fire from heaven, it did not burn the offering. Instead, it burnt Nadab and Abiyo. Who are we to question God? If He uh, destroyed the brothers, we, we have no rights to question the Lord God. Now, who on the other hand, according also to the scriptures, after learning that Cain and Nadab and Abiyo they were not accepted by the Lord because they did their own will. For them, their way seemed to be righteous, but the end is death. Literally, they were killed by God, destroyed or punished by God. Who, on the other hand, according also to the scriptures, are the people who were accepted by God? Because in their services, they obeyed the will of the Father from heaven. Let's open the book of John, chapter 13, and the verse 6. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my pit? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do now thou knowest not, but thou shalt know thereafter or hereafter. In this particular point, our Lord Jesus Christ is leading the Passover. The Passover, it is a commemoration or a remembrance of the night when the Lord God, when the Lord God has saved the Israelite from the last pest that the Lord or the last destruction the Lord have sent to the land of Egypt to punish the Egyptian. The Lord decided to kill all the firstborn child of the Egyptians and all also the firstborn of all animals then. And accordingly that night, through Moses, the Lord God told the Israelites so that they will not be a victim of the smoke that I shall pass to kill the firstborn of the Egyptian. Thou shall on that last night of yours in Egypt shall eat the Passover, and the blood of the Lamb shall be painted in every frame of the doors of all Israelites. According to the Holy Scripture, as I see the blood in your houses, I will pass over. And this only means, Passover means peace. Kapayapaan in Tagalog. Peace, because you will not be hurt and you will not die. And that particular night was asked by God to the Israelites to celebrate and to remember in every year. And that is why on this particular uh, time, in the book of John 13.6, our uh, Lord Jesus Christ is commemorating or uh, celebrating the Passover with all his apostles way back in Egypt then the last night of the Israelite before they were given to remove themselves from Egypt they were asked by the Lord while uh, he is passing and destroying the firstborn that they should eat an unleavened bread and they should drink wine and they should also wash their feet so that is literally speaking how even today a true Christian must uh, remember the Passover. This is the real Pasco. This is the real Christmas. This is the true Christmas. The true celebration of the Passover, the eating of the unleavened bread, the drinking of uh, the grape 
Jews and the washing of it that is the true Christmas or Passover when the Lord God gave total peace to the Israelite when they were saved out from the hand of the Pharaohs in the bondage of slavery for 400 years and was likewise initiated by our Lord Jesus Christ together with His twelve apostles. And to this particular portion, our Lord Jesus, after taking the unleavened bread and drinking grape juice together with the apostles, He removed His clothes accordingly and wrapped a towel around His waist and get a bucket of water, and He started washing the feet the feet of the apostles and when it come to the turn of peter peter told him and uh, uh, told him are you also going to wash my feet because peter have a notion that the lord jesus is his savior his rabbi his lord and he doesn't want to be washed by the lord he is uh, trying to show the lord how uh, humble he is and how he desired that he, him, he, he should wash the, the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ instead of Jesus washing his feet. This is why the Lord said, Now you do not know what I am doing, but you shall know later. And what is uh, the main point of our Lord Jesus that the apostles should do like Peter? In verse 8, Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, if I will not wash you, Peter, thou shalt have no part with me. And Simon Peter, in verse 9, said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. When Peter understood the importance of washing of feet, that is a symbol of humbleness, humility, and even the Lord says, The servant is no greater than their master. If I, your Lord, I wash your feet. Humility, I wash your feet. Thou shalt also wash its other's feet. And when he understood that, Peter said, My Lord, not, o not only my feet, wash even my hands and my head. Give me a bath. But Jesus said to him, verse 10, He that is washed, Meaning only to say, baptized already. They were immersed. They were immersed under water. He that is washed needed not anymore to be washed or to be baptized again, except save to wash his feet. Meaning only to say, the washing of the feet is after you are already a member of the Church of God in Christ Jesus and you were baptized already in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we have to, to commemorate, remember, we have to emulate, we have to do this again. That is why even us in the Church of God, we are doing it every year, the eating of the unleavened bread, which signifies the body of Christ that was crucified in the cross, and drinking of the grape juice that signifies the blood of our Lord Jesus, and we wash our feet, each other's, every year. For us, Church of God in Christ Jesus, we here in Los Angeles, California, we always do it, our Passover or our Pasqua, every first Sunday of the first month of the year. Who else? Aside from Peter, when he submit himself to be washed by our Lord Jesus, remember, God washed the feet of Peter. Could you imagine how dirty is the feet of the fishermen? How bad it is? Just imagine it. Are there other people in the Holy Scriptures, when they accepted the will of the Father, the Lord God is pleased to them? Let us open the book of Luke, chapter 1, the verses 38. And Mary said, this is the Virgin Mary. Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to the word. And the angel departed from her. When a angel of God from heaven was sent by God to Virgin Mary and told her that she will conceive a baby by the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary accordingly is devoted 
to offer her whole life untouched by a man and she would like to offer herself to God, her services to God as a virgin. And that is the very reason why the Lord God who have selected Mary because you know God is holy. And if it is uh, the will of our Lord God, when Philippians chapter 2 verse uh, 5 Apostle Paul said, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ, that though he is in the form of God, he ought it not a robbery to be equal with God. He removed himself. Why did he remove his being a God? Because he will manifest into flesh through Virgin Mary. Let us remember that. He is God. He only put himself inside Mary, so Mary will conceive a baby and that one that was conceived when he was born they call him Emmanuel by interpretation the Lord is with us and this conception of Virgin Mary of our Lord Jesus Christ was even prophesied by uh, prophet Isaiah uh, 9 and the verse is 6 of prophet Isaiah's book for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Who is he? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So even though Mary doesn't want him herself to be blemished by a man, because he was going to be married to an old man whose name is uh, Joseph. So what did Peter? Uh, what did Mary said? And Mary said, Luke chapter one thirty-eight. Behold, here is your servant. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to the word, according to the will of the Father in heaven. Even if I do not want, according to Mary, my physical virginity to be blemished, here is the handmaid of God. Let the words be it unto me. Meaning only to say, do the will of the Father. Whatever is the will of the Father, it shall be done on me, according to Mary. Amen. And that is why the reason, this is already the latter end of times. Too many human beings are glorifying Virgin Mary like a God. She is being deified as a mother of God. God have no mother. Remember that. This is plain and simple logic. How can Mary that was only created by God be the mother of God? And the Almighty God is our true God. As he said in Jeremiah chapter 32 and the verses 27. Behold. I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything hard for me? Meaning only to say, there is nothing impossible to God. If he would like to impregnate or make pregnant any, any woman, he, he can do it. And who are we to question him? He is the Almighty. He is the powerful. So we have to silence ourselves. We just have to obey. That is the only thing we should do. And in Matthew, last verse that I'm going to read, chapter 26 and the verses 39, And he went a little farther and fell on his face. I'm going to repeat this to you. The, what is the meaning of the true servitude to God? The answer is Matthew 26, 39. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Here it is. Nevertheless, not as I will, not my will, but as the will in heaven. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, my beloved loved ones, our friends, and our fellow true worshippers in the spirit and in the truth. Today, in our Bible study number nine, the Lord God has taught us how our servitude to Him shall be acceptable to Him and not be void or not be annulled or not be 
thrown to trash, to garbage trash. It is very clear that servitude to him is obedience to all his commandment. Whatever is the will of the Father in heaven, let it all be done by us. For the glory of our only living Almighty God, Lord, whose name is Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, before we finally conclude our Bible study number 9, let us give a short thanksgiving to our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you very much for this opportunity of giving us once more a peaceful way of learning about the true servitude acceptable to your throne in heaven. Thank you very much, dear Lord. And before we finally parted away from each other spiritually, kindly give us your blessings through the use of your humble servant. And now let us all receive the everlasting glory, the everlasting providence, the everlasting guidance, the everlasting hope for the life eternal that He have promised us if we pursue and be loyal to Him until the end. Let us all receive the blessings of our Lord to each and every one of us and also to all our loved ones, especially to all our friends and to the true worshippers in the Spirit and in the truth. In the Church of God, in Christ Jesus, Amen. Good day to all of you. Peace be with us until our next Bible study. Good luck to each and every one of you.